so finally after all this work this is the finished LC meter uh, we're gonna test it now we're gonna do some measurements uh, see how it performs and then I'm gonna use a USB to UART converter connected to my laptop and I'll show you the PC application I wrote for this uh, an application which makes this tool even more efficient I've implemented the function which helps to catalog parts very helpful when you have to do uh, a lot of measurements and you want to hold the values uh, maybe save them in a spreadsheet and export it uh, you'll see that in a second I'm using these leads which will fit into these connectors and I bought two different types of probes for them. I use this once when I'm measuring SMD components or whenever I measure parts which are soldered on a PCB. And for through hole components, I'm going to use this alligator clips. Okay, so let's measure something. The LC meter is putting up now, and uh, we're going to allow it a few seconds to go through self calibration. I'm going to start with this electrolytic capacitor. This is a 0 0.47 microfarads. Each time I do a measurement, there's going to be a close up image of the part uh, appearing in a corner. The next one is also an electrolytic capacitor. Its value should be around 0 0.22 microfarads or 220 nano. Okay, next part is also a capacitor. I can't decipher the label on the plastic bag, but uh, the marking says 681, so I guess it should be uh, 680 picofarads. And it's pretty close. This is a 2.2 picofarads. Let's see how it goes. Please keep in mind this is such a low capacitance, uh, these probes I'm using are also adding a little bit of capacitance. For such low values it would be better to remove the leads and just place the part in the female connectors. Uh, keep everything as short as possible. Yeah, so very close. We're within 20% tolerance. 20% from 2.2 is uh, 0.44, so yeah, 2.6 picofarads would be the upper limit. Uh, let's see, these are 220 nanofarad capacitors. Yeah, and you can see the battery low symbol is flashing. This is a 10 micro Henry through hole inductor. The silver ring means 10% tolerance. Okay, let me put that away. I'm going to take these capacitors here. I don't know what value they are. Um, let's see. So as I was telling you through whole packages, uh, you can read the markings. This one here should be uh, 220 picofarads. If this was an SMD package, uh, ceramic capacitors don't have any markings on SMD packages. So there would be no way to identify this part other than measure it. 200 picofarads. I'm going to change the probes now and measure some SMD components. This ones I labeled just before the video 100 micro Henry.
The next one is a 15 microhenry inductor. Make sure you're not touching any exposed terminals or the tips of the probes while measuring. Let's measure this once. Uh, let's pretend we're looking for an inductor as close as possible to 20 microhenry. So I would take this one here. This is a bigger inductor, it should read 1 millihenry or 1000 microhenry. And it's pretty good. And it gets smaller. These are 0805 SMD package. Uh, I've managed to measure even smaller packages with these probes, but it's pretty difficult to do it on camera. This should be 8.2 picofarads. And finally, the last thing I'm going to measure, uh, 56 nanofarads. I'm going to change the battery after this segment. And we're going to close this video series with the PC application for the LC meter. Just like I promised you, I'm going to use this USB UART converter to establish a UART communication to my laptop. Uh, we're using TX, RX and ground only. And before I plug this in the USB port, I'm going to start the application on my computer. Basically, I kept everything to a minimum, uh, just a simple interface. There's a how-to button, which opens an information window. Here we have the port settings for the UART communication. And if I click here, it will scan for connected devices. I don't have anything on COM ports yet. Um, as soon as I plug the USB connector, the assigned COM port will be discovered. And it will show up here. So now I can establish a connection. You don't have to change anything here unless you modify the firmware. We're going to click open.
And if everything was done properly, the altimeter will be detected. The connection has been established. As you can see, the application forces the altimeter to reboot. And we're going through calibration sequence again. Alright, so I'm going to use these parts for this test. Uh, we're not only going to measure their values, but we're going to create a database uh, a catalog for the values. And it measures the value of this inductance, 9.7 microhenries. And if I click on catalog parts, the value appears here. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit and measure all the components. Uh, sometimes an error message appears. Uh, it takes a few hundred milliseconds from the moment I press the button uh, to measure a part uh, until the part gets detected. This is the last one, so we have six capacitors and three inductors. And their values are locked in these tables. Um, I can either clear all the entries or I can export these tables. If I choose export, this dialog will ask me to confirm. And a text file will be created, you can find it uh, in the root of the application. The name of this file contains the date and time when it was created. And as you can see here, uh, we exported the measured values and basically you can use this to create labels or build a database for your components. Oh, and one more thing, this section here contains a log of the UART communication and this can also be exported uh, if you want to inspect it later uh, for debug purposes. The log is also saved as plain text. Uh, for instance, here, when we measure it, the 49 nanofarad capacitor, uh, this was the F3 frequency, 92 point something kilohertz. Or here, for this inductor, F4 was 437079 hertz. You can use these values if you want to manually uh, solve those equations, 5 and 6 I believe, uh, to double check everything. And here are the measured parts. Uh, mission accomplished. Thanks for watching this series. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to leave a comment. Uh, I'm interested to know which part of the series of the designing process you like the most. Like I said in the beginning, I'm giving away three copies of the LC Meters PCB. One month after this part gets uploaded, I will pick the winners from the comment sections of the series. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.